We'll return to MIT's Plasma Science at Future sure. Center, but let us linger on the uh, destruction of human civilization, uh, which brings us to the topic of nuclear fission. What is that? What, uh, so the, the process that is inside uh, nuclear weapons and current nuclear power plants. So it relies on the same underlying physical principle, but it's exactly the opposite, mm -hmm. of which actually the names imply. Fusion means bringing things together. Fission means splitting things apart. Mm -hmm. So fission uh, requires the heaviest instead of the lightest and the most unstable versus the most stable uh, uh, elements. So this tends to be uranium uh, or plutonium, pr primarily uranium. So take uranium, so uranium-235 is one of the, that this is one of the heaviest unstable elements. And what happens is that this is, uh, and uh, fission is triggered by the fact that one of these subatomic particles, the neutron, which has no electric charge, basically gets in proximity enough to this uh, and, and triggers an instability uh, effectively inside of this, what is teetering on the border of instability and basically splits it apart. And that's the fission, right? The fiss fissioning. Um, and so when that happens, because the products that are, and it kind of it roughly splits in two, but it's not even that. It's actually more complicated. It splits into this whole array of lighter elements and nuclei. Uh, and when that happens, there's less rest mass uh, uh, left than the, than the original one. It, so it's actually the same. So it's, again, it's rearrangement of the strong nuclear force that, that's happening. Um, but that's the source of the energy. And so in the end, it's like, so this is a famous graph that we show everybody is, is basically, it turns out every element that exists in the periodic table, all the things that make up everything mm -hmm. have, uh, have a, remember you, you asked a good question. It was like, so should we think of mass as being the same as stored energy? Yes. So you can make a plot that basically shows the relative amount of stored energy in all of the elements that are stable and make up basically the world, okay, in the universe. And it turns out that this one has a maximum amount of, of stability or storage uh, at iron. So it's kind of in the middle of the periodic table because this goes from, you know, it's, it's roughly that. And so this, what that means is that if, um, if you take something heavier than iron, like uranium, which is which is more than twice as heavy than that, and you split apart, if somehow just magically you can just split apart its constituents and you get something that's lighter, that will, because it moves to a more stable energy state, it releases kinetic energy. That's the energy that we use. Kinetic energy meaning the movement of things. So it's actually an energy you can do something with. And fusion it sits on the other side of that because it's also moving towards iron, but it's do, it has to do it through fu fusion together. So this leads to some pretty profound differences. As I said, they have some underlying physics or science um, uh, proximity to each other, but they're literally the opposite. So fusion, why is this? It actually goes into practical implications of it, which is that fission can happen at room temperature. It's because there's this neutron has no electric charge and therefore it's literally room temperature neutrons that actually trigger the reaction. So this means um, in order to establish uh, what's going on with it, and it works by a chain reaction, is that you can do this at room temperature. So Enrico Fermi did this like on a on a university campus, University of Chicago campus. The first sustained you know chain reaction was done underneath a squash court with a big blocks of graphite, you know, it was still, I mean, don't get me wrong, an incredible human achievement, right? But that's, you know, and then you think about fusion, I have to build a contraption of some kind that's going to get to 100 million degrees. Okay, wow, that's a big difference. The other one is about the chain reaction, that namely fission works by the fact that when that fission occurs, it actually produces free neutrons. Free neutrons, particularly if they get slowed down to room temperature, trigger, can trigger other fission reactions if there's other uranium nearby or fissile materials. So this means that the way that it releases energy is that you set this up in a very careful way such that every, on average, every reaction that happens exactly releases enough neutrons and slows down that they actually make another reaction, one, exactly one. 
And th what this means is that because each reaction releases a fixed amount of energy, blah, 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 you do this, and then in time, this looks like just a constant power output. So that's how our fission power plant works. And so their control of the, the chain reactions is extremely yes. difficult and extremely important for It's very important. Fission. And when you intentionally design it, that it, it creates more than one mm -hmm. fission reaction per, per starting reaction, then it exponentiates away. But which is which is what a nuclear weapon is. Yeah. So how, how does an atomic weapon work? How does a, a hydrogen bomb work? Asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, at, at its heart, what it ha what you do is you very quickly put together enough of these materials that can undergo fission with room temperature neutrons, mm -hmm. and you put them together fast enough that what happens is that the, this process can essentially grow mathematically, like very fast. Mm -hmm. And so this releases large amounts of energy. So that's the underlying reason that it works. So you've heard of a fusion weapon. So this is interesting is that it is, it, but it's dislike fusion energy in the sense that what happens is that you're using fusion reactions to but it simply it increases the gain actually of the weapon rather than um it, it's it's not a pure at, at its heart it's still a fission weapon you're just using fusion reactions as a sort of an intermediate catalyst basically to to get even more energy out of it but it's not directly applicable to to be used in an energy source does it terrify you just to, again to step back at the philosophical the humans have been able to use physics and uh, engineering to create such powerful weapons? I wouldn't say terrify. I mean, we should be, <laughs> this, is the, this is the progress of, of humanity. Every time that we've gotten access, you talk, you know, the day the universe changed. Those really changed when we got access to new kinds of energy sources. But every time you get access, and typically what this meant was you get access to more intense energy, right? That's And that's what that was. And so the ability to move from burning wood to using coal, to using gasoline and petroleum, and then finally to use this is that, is that both the potency and the consequences are elevated around those things. It's just like you said, the, the way that fusion, nuclear fusion would change the world, I don't think, unless we think really deeply, we'll be able to anticipate some of the things we can create. There's going, going to be a lot of amazing stuff, yeah. but then that amazing stuff is gonna enable more amazing stuff and more, unfortunately, or uh, depending how you see on it, m more powerful weapons. Well, yeah, but see, that's the thing. Fusion breaks that trend mm -hmm. in the following way. So one of them, so fusion doesn't work on a chain reaction. There's no chain reaction, zero. So this means it cannot physically exponentiate away on you because it works. And actually, this is why stars, by the way, we know this already. It's why stars are so stable, why most stars and suns are so stable. It's because they are regulated through their own temperature and their heating. Because what's happening is not that there's some probability of this exponentiating away, is that the energy that's being released by fusion basically is keeping the fire hot. <laughs> Um, and these tend to be, you know, and when it comes down to thermodynamics and things like this, there's a reason, for example, it's pretty easy to keep a constant temperature like in an oven and things like this. It's the same thing in fusion. So this is actually one of the features that I would argue fusion breaks the, um, breaks the trend of this is that it's, it has more energy intensity than, than, than fission on, on paper, but it actually does not have the consequences of control and sort of rapid release of the energy because it's actually, it, it, the physical system just doesn't want to do that. Yeah. We're gonna have to look elsewhere for the weapons with which we fight World War III. Fair enough. <laughs>